in the KQED trial was consistently reminded by the Attorney General that um, we weren't allowed to even have a camera on the same floor in the federal building as the courtroom, much less in the courtroom. Uh, and how can they say, how can KQED say they have the right to go into the heart of a maximum security prison and televise what goes on there when they can't even be in this courtroom? Which was an interesting point. It didn't really matter all that much. Uh, and the judge was still willing to entertain the evidence about whether we had uh, a right to televise executions. But after we had finished the evidence, after several days of testimony, the judge then said, okay, Turner, go get your evidence, if you can find any, uh, that would demonstrate your right to be at the execution, your right of access to the execution. And so we set about digging into the historical stuff, um, newspaper morgues, uh, and old records and records of executions and so on. Uh, and we found that um, public hangings in California had uh, always been open uh, up until, you know, the time uh, California became a state, hangings were open to the public and there would be mobs of people who would come in and watch hangings. Um, and that that had been true from the very beginning of California uh, and up until uh, the 1890s and so on when uh, they took executions out of the hands of the local sheriffs and put them in the hands of the wardens of San Quentin and Folsom Prison. And nothing changed. The public and the press were still allowed. Reporters reported what happened to the executions and so on. Uh, in 1937, when we changed to the gas chamber, abolishing hangings and setting up the gas chamber at San Quentin, they built risers in the execution chamber for spectators to stand on uh, and, um, and to look at that little, uh, the little gas chamber thing and they had windows in it. Uh, so there was a history of an unbroken history of openness to press and public in California. Uh, and then we argued that under Richmond newspapers, that established a presumption of openness of an execution. And then the question is, what practical values would openness of executions serve? Are there any? Why do you, why do you need openness of execution? If the purpose is deterrence, showing an execution to the people will add to the deterrent or enhance or help the deterrent value of capital punishment. Yeah. Think about the utilitarian values that the court approved in the Richmond newspapers case. Did they apply to execution? Do you know? Yeah, it makes some sense, to, but that applies to access to all kinds of government operations, doesn't it? Yeah. Wouldn't be limited to, to execution. Mm -hmm. anyway. Is it fake things you see? Mm -hmm. yeah, you, your, your principle and penis principle of government transparency is too broad, right? I mean, if what you're after is government transparency, that applies to whatever government is doing. And we already know from KQED versus Houchins, that there is no general right of access to government uh, facilities. But here we've got some historical help from the openness, and the question is, what are the practical values, if any, of allowing openness of executions, Roger? Right? If what? The, the individual. Well, let's see, how would that apply? The, who, the, who the person being executed is? No one has suggested that the public figure status or the notoriety celebrity of the condemned person justifies openness, although it's an argument that, that might work. And in principle terms, I don't know how you justify that, that uh, you say openness is required in order for the public to understand what, what this celebrity looks like when he's being held to fear. I was just going to say, I think that uh, the three like, functional values that this person has previously could, in like, some way, still be applied to an open execution. Uh, because for some people, it does have value ensuring that justice is being carried out with you, like they're seeing like, some kind of execution, and it really, like, it promotes like, the justice system. Yeah, all, all, all three of them, and you've touched on a couple of them there. I mean, it has cathartic value. You know, this is the culmination of our justice system. Show the people what the consequences are of committing a capital crime. Educate them about how the system has worked. Assure that they won't, they've got the right guy, uh, and that they didn't mistreat him, torture him, abuse him, uh, so that the public would have greater acceptance of, of the capital punishment law. So it seems like those Richmond newspapers' considerations would apply to executions. And believe it or not, Judge Schnocky bought that. <laughs> so he says, he leans back in his chair, no written opinion, put his feet up, and says that it seems like it's unreasonable for the warden to exclude the press at this point from an execution. So he decides in this casual way that we have a right to be there. He actually put that in a permanent injunction. It's still the law in California. You can't exclude the press from executions. 
Then he proceeded to rule that we had no right to use cameras. Uh, and he adopted three of the warden's justifications for uh, not allowing cameras to um, televise an execution. Our, our argument was, to some extent, based on Stewart's concurring opinion in the Houchins case, that since we had the right to be there, we had the right to use the tools of our trade, cameras and recording equipment, in order to do an, quote, effective job of reporting the news to the general public. Um, but Judge Shockey found that three of the warden's reasons for not allowing television were valid. One of them was what came to be known as the suicidal camera person phenomenon. Uh, the warden had testified that these broadcast quality cameras were 27 pounds worth and that if a cameraman wished to, he could hurl the camera at the glass in the execution chamber, the gas chamber, aborting the execution, releasing the gas, possibly killing the witnesses in, in the execution chamber. And it was pointed out during the trial that there were pillars in the execution chamber and you could mount a camera on one of these pillars out of reach uh, and operate it remotely so that there wouldn't be any danger of breaking the glass or aborting the execution at all. But uh, Judge Schnocky's theory was in a difficult, solemn process like conducting an execution, the warden is not required to run any risks. So he said suicidal camera person may be a valid concern. Uh, more seriously, uh, the warden said that he was concerned about retaliation against the guards who worked the uh, prison, worked the execution, who would come in and strap the man into, into the chair and so on, and they would be identified, and somebody, relatives of the condemned man, uh, gang members associated with somebody, would seek out those guards, hunt them down, and hurt them. Uh, and we demonstrated technologically how, yeah, I'm sure you've seen it zillions of times on television, how you can obliterate the identity of somebody. Blow up the pixels and you can't see who you're looking at. We used an orange balloon that followed the person around you couldn't see who it was. The judge said, yeah, but the original videotape uh, would still be able to identify them and there's no guarantee that it might not be leaked and that somebody somewhere somehow might retaliate against the guard for having participated in an execution. That even though there has never been anywhere in any state in history retaliation against a guard who participated in an execution. You know, lots of people have seen it. And the third reason that the, the television wouldn't be allowed is because the warden testified that the prisoners, most of whom in San Quentin have television sets in their cells, would, if an execution were on television, be inflamed by seeing this to riot or rebellion or retaliation against guards who might happen to be walking by and so on. And the judge adopted that justification as well, even though the evidence showed that the uh, television system at San Quentin was closed circuit and they could, at the flip of a switch, black out all of the prisoners. Uh, but rather than black out the prisoners, the warden um, blacked out the general public from seeing executions. So the net result was no television. Yeah, you can be there, um, but you can't use the tools of your trade, uh, and that's still the law. Questions about this or about the access material generally? Okay, I greatly look forward to the decision in the Alvarez case, which you're going to deliver on Tuesday.